for the next few minutes, let's talk about something that's very important to you, especially if you're trying to lose fat, and that's why calories don't count. I already have another video on this channel about why counting calories is stupid. And in this video, I'm going to go even more in depth and talk about details that I don't talk about in the other video. So if you want to watch that one after this one, you would probably learn a little bit more. And I'm not there's not going to be any overlap in the two videos. So if you know someone who's trying desperately to lose fat, because that's what we all want to do. We don't want to lose weight. We don't want to lose muscle. We don't want to lose bone. We don't want to lose fat. And to do that, there are specific things you should eat. There are specific things you should avoid. And there are specific things you should do. And so I'm going to put down in the comments down below, I'm going to pin my comment to the top. If you'd like to learn more about how to actually lose fat, then you can check out my Keto 101 series. If you know anyone who is trying to lose fat desperately but just cannot, please consider sharing this video with them. You can share it on Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, wherever you want to share it. Now, let's jump into this. There are, there are three things I'm going to talk about, three key concepts as to why counting calories is stupid. It's dumb. It's worthless. It's a waste of time. It's actually worse than worthless because you wind up doing all this busy work and you think you're really having a meaningful effect on your health, but you're really not. And so that's that's really the, the dastardly nature of counting calories is you're so busy, you're so dedicated, you're expending all your energy mentally trying to count these damn calories and trying to lose this fat, and it fails every time. And it's been failing since we started talking about counting calories back in the 50s and 60s. Now, let's get into the first concept. And concept number one is, is that the calorie counts you hear about are estimated and rounded, okay? So you hear that like a gram of carbohydrate is four calories, and a gram of protein is four calories, and a gram of fat is nine calories. Well, actually, those numbers are, are estimated and rounded. There is no such thing as a gram of carbohydrate that yields exactly four calories. That doesn't exist, okay? The, these are accepted uh, estimates. That does not mean they're real. So if you're trying to actually count up and get a, a, an actual calorie number, you are off every single time you try to do that. And that's why one of the reasons why counting calories is dumb. Let's dive into this a little more. So let's talk about carbohydrates first. There's supposed to be four calories per gram in a carbohydrate, but it totally depends on the kind of carbohydrate it is. If it's a sugar, it'll have anywhere from four to 4.2 grams or calories per gram. So that's pretty close. But what about starches? Starches have 4.4 calories per gram. So that's uh, that's 10% off, right, if you, if you calculate that. What about soluble fiber? That shouldn't have any calories, right? Well, actually, that's not right. It's got somewhere between 2 and 2.5 two and calories per gram of soluble fiber. Yes, fiber has calories. And then insoluble fiber usually has less than 1 calorie per gram. It's not zero, but it's usually less than one calorie per gram. Now, proteins are, uh, yield about 4.25 calories per gram, not four. And so, again, you're off by, by five to six percent before you ever get started if you're trying to calculate how many calories you ate today by grams of fat, uh, protein, you're already off by 10 or 15 percent. Uh, fats, now this is very interesting. We're, we're told that fats contain nine calories per gram, right? Well, that's actually not true at all either. If it's a polyunsaturated oil, then it, can tr it contains 9.1 to 9.2 calories per gram. If it is an animal fat, it can be anywhere from 6.5 calories per gram up to 8 calories per gram. And so if you're counting 9 calories per gram, you can see that if you're eating certain kinds of animal fat, you're greatly overestimating the, the amount of calories you're getting a day. If it's cocoa butter, and this is a very unique example, cocoa butter is, is pure saturated fat, uh, plant fat, but it only has 5.5 calories per gram, even though it's saturated fat. And so you can see just immediately from the first concept, you can never know, knowingly uh, calculate an exact number of calories that was in your food that you just were about to eat. Okay, now, concept number two. Not everything we eat is 
burned as energy. And actually, we don't burn things like a little oven, burn things up. We metabolize things, right? And we extract ATP and GTP and NADH and other, other energy sources from this. But we're going to say burn just for simplicity. We don't burn everything we eat, okay? Now, listen carefully to this. This is very important. Once you understand this concept, you can't be fooled by the calories in, calories out superstition anymore. So, if you eat carbs, then you're going to burn the, all that's going to be burned for energy. We don't make anything in our body. No structure, no cell, no tissue is made out of carbohydrates. And so any carbs you eat, you are going to that's going to count as calories. That's going to count as energy that you either burn for energy or you store it as energy, which is what fat is, right? Now, what about proteins? When you eat a steak, do you do you burn all that protein for energy? Do you metabolize all that? Absolutely not. In some cases, the majority of the protein that you eat is not metabolized. It's not burned at all. So what happens to it? We, we, so we do digest the protein. Everything we eat has to be digested. So we, we break down the protein into its constituent amino acids. But then our body uses those amino acids to make cells. We have trillions of those, right? To make the organelles in cells. We have hundreds of trillions or quadrillions of those. It uses uh, your protein to make enzymes. Every repair that's made to every tissue and cell in your body uses the amino acids, so therefore proteins. Uh, what about your skin? You Every day you use an appreciable amount of the protein and amino acids you eat to make and rebuild skin. What about your blood? What about your muscle? What about your bones? All these things, you use directly the amino acids that come from the proteins as building blocks. You don't metabolize that protein. And so if you say, okay, I had 100 grams of protein today, that's 400 calories. That's not even close to right. You probably used almost all 100 grams of that protein to build and repair with. You, did, you can't count that as calories. And so, again... It's unknowable how, how many calories you ate today or how many calories you plan to eat tomorrow because you don't know how many grams of the protein you're going to use to build and repair with. Same goes for fat, the other macronutrient, fat. What do, so we eat a, say we eat 100 grams of fat today, right? We're on keto and we eat a lot of fat. Do you have to, is all that either burned as fuel or stored as fuel in the future? No, you use the fat to repair, to make and repair every cell membrane in your body, which there are trillions, right? You use the fat to make bile acids. You use the fat to make myelin sheaths around every uh, axon in your body. You use the fat to make prostaglandins, to make hormones, to make prostacyclins, to make leukotrienes. All these things are made directly from the fatty acids that come from the fats that you eat. So you can't count the total number of grams of fat and multiply by nine and say that's how many calories you got today. It just doesn't work that way. The human body is much, much more complicated than that. Now we're going to add a layer of complexity because every single day you're going to need more or less protein, depending on how much you slept, how hard you worked out, how, how upset you were what kind of stress you're under, all that stuff matters, and it's different every single day, and that goes for protein and fat. You'll need more hormones tomorrow than you need today. Therefore, more of the fat you ate didn't get burned as fuel or didn't get stored as fuel. Does that make sense? So you can never know how, much of the, how many of the grams of protein and fat that you ate were actually burned as fuel or stored as, as fat. You can never know that number because you don't know how much you needed to repair and to rebuild and just to build and to grow. You don't, you never know that number. Now the third concept, and this goes, this speaks directly to uh, food manufacturers. Okay. As I said earlier, the amount of calories that are in foods is estimated and rounded. And of course, food companies want you to buy the product. So they want it to look as attractive as possible. So if they can round down, they will. If they can round down the amount of carbohydrates, they will. If they can call a carbohydrate an insoluble fiber and, you, and make you think it has zero calories when it, in fact, does not, they'll do that, right? And so you just get, and so we'll take an ap apple, for example, right? This is one of Abby Grace's apples. How much does this apple weigh? How ripe is this apple? What species is this apple? How long has it been on the shelf? All those things matter when it comes to the percentage of starch versus sugar in this apple, right? 
So you can never know that. You, if, if my apple is not your apple, we don't have the same apples. Every single apple is different. Every single piece of fruit is different. Every single piece of vegetable is different. There's a different number. It's a different weight. And if you don't know the exact weight, the exact species, and the exact date that it was picked, how long it's been on the shelf, how ripe it is, then you cannot know the calorie content of this apple. Same goes for this rasher of bacon. Is See, my bacon is not your bacon. This is my bacon. My bacon weighs a different amount. It has a different percentage of fat versus percentage of protein. I, what, I mean, what species of pig? Does that matter? Yes, it matters. Does it matter if this pig was pastured or was fed lots of grains? Yes, that absolutely matters. This is not the bacon you're looking for. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? My bacon is not your bacon. You can never know how many calories are in a slice or a rasher of bacon. You can never know how many calories are in anything that you eat, number one. Number two, you can never know how many of the calories worth of protein and fat that you actually didn't burn that you used to rebuild, repair, and renew. And then secondly, we're just you know, fed a line of bull crap that the 449, the, the, the carbohydrate is four calories, Protein is four calories and fat is nine calories. And that's just not true as well, as well. And so stop worrying about the calories. Stop trying, stop even trying to estimate how many calories you ate yesterday or how many you're going to eat tomorrow. Stop trying to estimate how many calories you need for your basal metabolic rate. You, you can never calculate any of these things. They're not math problems. They're calculus problems. You'd need a supercomputer to calculate all these numbers. Stop worrying about it. If what you would like to do is lose fat, then you need to eat the proper human diet. And that's going to range somewhere between vegetable heavy ketogenic to carnivore. Somewhere in that spectrum is the proper human diet for you. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to hack the hormones that decide whether you're going to use this bacon and burn it for energy, or whether you're going to store it for energy later as fat, or whether you're going to use the protein and fat in this bacon to build, repair, and renew the cells that your body is made of. The hormones decide that. So you need to eat a diet. You need to have a way of eating and a way of living that honors those hormones and moves them all in the right direction. And that diet, that way of eating, is the ketogenic way. I have many videos about the ketogenic diet on this channel. You're welcome to check those out. Also, if you'd like to get more videos like this in the future, if you'll click the subscribe button, it's down there somewhere, and click the bell right beside it. Every time I make a new video, you'll then get a notification. All right, guys, this is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.